Uh, yeah, it's not. not I, I wish. I, I wish I was that uh, quick. Madame, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Um, as we I think announced uh, late last week, the Secretary General will be traveling to Cote d'Ivoire this evening to attend the Fifth African Union European Union Summit in Abidjan, uh, and he's scheduled to deliver his keynote. Uh, not the keynote, but deliver remarks on Wednesday. Uh, the theme of the summit is investing in the youth for a sustainable future. The Secretary General uh, will also expect to have a number of bilateral uh, meetings uh, while there, and he will be back in New York on Thursday afternoon. Uh, today, the Secretary General is meeting for the first time with his high-level advisory board on mediation, which was established to advise him on mediation matters and to contribute to his efforts to build stronger partnership towards prevention and resolving crises. The Secretary General in his remarks emphasized the critical role of the board has given, uh, have given their experience and knowledge and the role that they can play in preventive diplomacy. And as you, will have, as you saw, Stefan Di Mistura, the Secretary General Special Envoy for Syria, briefed the Security Council by VTC today about preparations for the round of talks on Syria that are be set to begin in Geneva tomorrow. He said that he believes the moment of truth has arrived for the Syria talks. As Daesh is being defeated, he said, neither side should turn to violence in the de-escalation zones. And he expressed concerns about the latest round of violence in eastern Ghouta. Regarding the situation there, our humanitarian colleagues tell us that a UN Syria Arab Red Crescent interagency convoy was not able to enter Nashabie in eastern Ghouta due to fighting in the area. The convoy contained food, health, and nutrition items for over 7,000 people in need. While guarantee of safe passage had been granted before the humanitarian convoy moved, it was forced to turn back following shelling and explosions in the area. Turning to Yemen, our humanitarian colleagues uh, tell us that the Saudi-led coalition has eased restrictions for humanitarian movements in Yemen's national airport in Sana'a and the Hodeida and Salif ports. On Saturday, three humanitarian flights landed and took off from Sana'a airport, including two UN humanitarian air service passenger flights and one humanitarian air cargo flight. One of those flights delivered 1.9 million doses of diphtheria vaccines, that's enough for 600,000 children, to protect them from whooping cough, tuberculosis, pneumonia, and meningitis. <coughs> the vaccines will help to contain the current outbreak of diphtheria, which since August has seen more than 170 suspected cases and at least 14 deaths have been recorded, recorded in the Ib governorate. Since the beginning of the blockade three weeks ago, the first, the first commercial cargo vessel carrying 5,500 metric tons of wheat flour was able to berth in Hodeida port yesterday, while a UN chartered vessel carrying 25,000 metric tons of bulk wheat berthed at Salif port today. With rapidly dwindling uh, fuel stocks in Yemen and the dire humanitarian situation pulling, pushing at least 7 million people towards famine, it's important that there is unimpeded access for both humanitarian and cargoes to enter Hodeida and Salif ports, including those carrying fuel. Fuel is urgently required to operate generators for hospitals, water well pumps, and sanitation units, and to facilitate the trucking of drinking water and food to vulnerable people in need. Some 21 million Yemenis need humanitarian assistance. And the Under Secretary General for Peacekeeping Operations, Jean-Pierre Lacroix, is in Brazil for a two-day visit. He's in Brasilia where he he's in Brasilia today where he will be delivering the lecture at the Ministry of Defense in Rio de Janeiro tomorrow he will meet uh, he will visit excuse me the Brazilian Marine Corps training center 
During his visit, he'll be meeting with government and security officials, as well as members of the Brazilian Congress. He will also convey gratitude for Brazil's engagement and contributions to UN peacekeeping, including the pivotal role P Brazilian peacekeepers played in the UN stabilization mission in, uh, Minusta, in Haiti, Minusta, towards bringing security and stability to the country. And you will have seen that uh, on the Central African Republic that we issued a statement yesterday evening in which the Secretary General strongly condemned the attack perpetrated by suspected anti-Balaka against a convoy of the UN mission in the country. As a result of the attack, one peacekeeper from Egypt was killed and three others were injured. The Secretary General offers his deepest condolences and sympathy to the family of the victims and to the government of Egypt and wishes a swift recovery to the wounded. With this latest attack, hostile acts have claimed the lives of 13 peacekeepers in the Central African Republic since the beginning of 2017. The Secretary General also recalls that attacks against United Nations peacekeepers may constitute a war crime, and he calls on the Central African authorities to investigate the attack in order to swiftly bring the perpetrators to justice. And a note from Bangladesh and Myanmar, our humanitarian colleagues tell us that the number of Rohingya refugees who have fled from Myanmar to Bangladesh since the 25th of August has now reached 624,000. An average of 430 Rohingya refugees per day entered Bangladesh this past week, and which is a decrease compared to the previous week. And just to flag that the World Health Organization warned that Madagascar's unprecedented outbreak of pneumonic plague is slowing down but that the response must be uh, sustained. According to the data published by the Madagascar Ministry of Health, the number of infections has been steady declined in recent weeks, but more infections of both bubonic and pneumonic plague are expected until the end of the plague season in April 2018. Between the 1st and the 22nd of November, the Madis Madagascar Ministry of Public Health reported more than 2,000 cases, including 202 deaths. In response, WHO released, uh, rapidly released $1.5 million in emergency funds, which enabled them to deliver 1.2 million doses of antibiotics and trained more than 4,400 people to work as contact tracers. More than 135 WHO and Global Outbreak Alert Response Network staff have been reassigned or deployed to Madagascar to respond to this outbreak. Ongoing support to sustain the response is required for comprehensive case finding active contact identification, treatment, rodent and flea control, <coughs> and ensuring safe and dignified burials for the victims. Halas. Yep. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, in Bahrain today, Sheikh Isa uh, Qasim, the Sidi the Ayatollah, is in dire need of medical aid, and of course, he has been under siege by the government forces for uh, over a year now. Uh, is there any mediation trying to help him in any way by the United Nations? I'm, I'm not aware uh, of any, but we do hope that he receives the medical treatment uh, that he needs. Edie. Uh, thank you, Steph. Um, Mr. Damastora said that the Syrian government has uh, not yet confirmed mm -hmm. its attendance at the Geneva talks scheduled to begin on Tuesday. Does the Secretary General have a message to the Syrian government about the importance of these talks? Well, you know, I think as Mr. Dimistor said, it's, uh, it's, this is a moment of truth for the Syria talks. And we obviously think the participation of the Syrian government uh, is very important. Abdel Hamid. Thank you. Yeah, I will ask the same question I sent it to you. Last Wednesday, Ms. Patton, she gave a 34-minute press, press conference on sexual violation of the Rohingya women. However, this important press conference has not been reported by DPI, neither by news center nor by radio, in all languages. Can they explain why they did is that negligence or intention? First, first of all, I, a, I, I can assure you there's nothing uh, intentional in it. Second of all, I think when we have press briefings here, it is really for, we do it for the media, 
uh, public and private, the media it's represented here to report. Uh, as for whether or not it was on, on the UN News Center, I can, uh, I can check. Evelyn, and then Iftikhar. Thank you, Steph. Could you give an overview on Yemen? Is the crisis over? I don't mean the crisis of feeding everyone, but is the crisis of the logistics and the politics with Saudi Arabia over? Can the UN deliver goods anywhere? Well, I, Saying 500 here and 500 there doesn't tell us if this, um, uh, you know, if this is if this has is now over. And I, I don't think anything is, is over. The suffering of the people of Yemen is the continuing. The suffering won't be over. And, no. But is the, is the, is the uh, controversy with the coalition, with the Saudis, over? Can the UN enter all over? Well, I think we, we're, we're obviously uh, we're glad that uh, the deliveries of, uh, of goods were able to, to resume at Hodeida, at Salif, and at Sana'a. Uh, airport, uh, but this is just a drop in the bucket. Uh, we need to make sure that there is unimpeded and open uh, availability of deliveries of uh, food, of fuel, uh, whether by, by land, by sea, or by, by air. Uh, the needs in Yemen are tremendous. If, if Sorry, no, 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 I, no, I will come back. I will that. come. I will come back to you. If to come. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, Okay, following up on Rohingya, situation of Rohingya refugees. Uh, over the weekend, there were reports that Bangladesh has reached an agreement with the government of Myanmar for the repatriation of all these people. And UN immediately responded that these conditions were not ripe for repatriation. Has the Bangladesh government or the Myanmar government shared the details of the agreement uh, with the right nation. I'm not aware that the details of the agreement have been uh, have, have been have been shared. Uh, I think we made our concerns known. Uh, UNHCR made its concerns uh, known. Uh, it's important that people be able to return home and uh, to the place they came from in a, in a safe, uh, dignified, and, and protected um, uh, protect, protected manner. But I'm not aware the details have been have been shown. Okay. Matthew, and then Majid, sorry. Sure, thanks a lot. I wanted to ask you about uh, about this indictment that became public last Monday uh, of Senegal's former foreign minister and an ECOSOC, uh, the head of an ECOSOC uh, uh, NGO, the China Energy Fund Committee. The reason, it, I guess what I tried to figure this out last week and then compare it to the UN's response when an indictment was announced of Eng Lapsang and he was the head of San Kanip. I wanted to, it seems that on November 21st, after the indictment was announced, after questions were asked in this room, that an event went forward using $1 million from C CEFC. And I wanted to know, I did notice that, that and I want, you know, Fairhan had said things get canceled all the time. The photo op was canceled with the group or the winners of the award. The DSG's speech at the event was canceled, but the event went forward. So on what basis was there, did you consult, did the secretary, not you personally, consult OLA on the advisability of just following a detailed indictment about essentially this group's money being a bribery conduit going forward and handing the money out. I think, Where does it stand? I think, I think you should uh, contact the organizers of the meeting. But a, U, a, a UN decision was made. Mr. Liu of, of DESA was there. I think you should there. contact the organizers of the meeting. Who is, okay. Meaning who? The organizers of the meeting. Is that DESA or the, the NGO? You should look into the meeting and see who the organizers were. Do you were. speak for DESA? Because it, I, I'm just, even, that's, that's my, it's my answer to you. Uh, but, but do okay, you have another let me question? Ask you, has the UN done anything since last Monday, a full week? Both gentlemen are in jail. The former foreign minister of Senegal remains in jail. What has the UN done following a detailed indictment that describes bribery inside the UN building and involving UN structures? I don't read the indictment uh, in the same way as you know the, uh, the consultative status of this organization was granted by member states, and it's up to them uh, to deal with the, uh, with the issues. And the other parts of the indictment, the way I read it, uh, does not involve anyone who is a staff member of this organization. One, just one final question. Thanks a lot, because you're, you're saying this NGO may have been accredited by, but may, to ECOSOC by member states, but a decision not was may, made. I'm not, I'm not saying may have, it was. Okay, so de but DESA's decision to go forward with the I think you should money talk, makes I, that's, it look that's worse my, that's than my, what that's happened my under Ban Majid. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, I have a question about Iraq, and it's going to be a little bit long, but I have to explain well, the, this to you. The, the, and let's let's make the preamble 
the okay. program <laughs> short and the question incisive. Well, last Wednesday, uh, uh, UN Special Envoy to Iraq told the Security Council that the forces that took over the disputed territory and Kirkuk in Iraq, they are federal forces. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, just yesterday, we have uh, my network, Ruda Media Network, we got videos of uh, of the fact that that's not just, that's not true, that they are Shiite, Iran-backed Shiite militias in those areas, but they have also destroyed thousands of Kurdish houses. They are targeting Kurdish civilians in a town of Tuz Khurmatu. There is a systematic removal of anything that is Kurdish in those areas. These are the well-documented. We have the videos. I'll be happy to share it with you. And uh, plus, there are still, as you know, pending allegations of widespread violations that the UN in Iraq still call it. We got reports of this allegation. They don't confirm it. Why not? Why the, uh, why the UN program or UNAMI can't confirm those allegations in those areas? Well, I'm sure, uh, listen, I think it may be a question for you to ask UNAMI. I'm sure they can. They are able to confirm things that they're only able to confirm, that they can see for themselves or sure of the, of the sources. That's not to disparage uh, whatever reports uh, may be out there. It is incumbent on uh, security forces uh, to respect uh, the human rights of the civilian population, to ensure that there is no retribution, to ensure that there is no uh, forced, uh, there's no dis, uh, forced uh, displacement, further displacement of people, or that people aren't detained without any, uh, without any due, due process. Uh, we would expect that all forces respect the human rights of the civilian population. One follow up on that, since the UNAMI <coughs> is, is uh, and has, we have a special envoy that's directly linked mm -hmm. to the secretariat. Um, it's really puzzling why the ISIS, the crimes that are committed by ISIS are documented by the UN, confirmed by the UN so easily, but the crimes that are committed against Sunni Arab populations, against Kurds by certain forces, they are, they I, are I just called, they, we receive no, the reports. I, I think, they don't uh, say I, I don't, it happens. Uh, I don't particularly agree with the, the premise of your... Of, of, your, of, your, of your statement, we have uh, in the past where we've been able to confirm crimes against anyone. We have confirmed that. And I would encourage you to look at the monthly reports that UNAMI does. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, just a follow-up question on the Senegalese uh, diplomat, Sheikh Gadio. Obviously, uh, they're with the Ang Lapsen case. It seems that the uh, that U.S. prosecutors are stepping up cases like these. And I was just wondering, as a question of information, has there been with any other UN member states where uh, where the UN has property. Has there ever been a case, for example, in, um, in where Swiss prosecutors uh, uh, brought a case involving an accusation of corruption in Geneva, or it, where French prosecutors brought a case of alleged corruption. Listen, I, I think that would be research uh, we'd have to do together. Uh, right. the, the, the point is that uh, the people named uh, in this indictment uh, are not UN, uh, UN officials. What we do know as a fact is that corruption uh, is a global uh, pandemic and it strikes uh, and it strikes everywhere. So I guess a kind of follow-up question to that is, you know, if there were that kind of precedent, is there a way of dealing with that problem uh, on an international basis? Has that been explored? And well, there are, there are uh, international conventions uh, uh, against uh, against corruption. So yes, and there are, there are, there are a number of UN programs uh, that work with countries to combat uh, to combat uh, corruption. Um, to your question. Abdelhamid, I can tell you the new center reported on the special representative's press release on the Rohingya, which was issued a week prior to her press conference. So uh, I think we, sh we all need to do some research. I was asking about the press conference. Right, but I'm saying if the content, I mean, then you have to be fair because the content of her press conference was was her press release, which was issued a week before, and that was fully reported on uh, by UNDPI in all its uh, in in all its vastness. Mr. Klein, yes, uh, two questions. One was a follow up to the to, to this indictment, and given given the connection of the UN, at least on the allegation that uh, that some of the uh, conduct 
alleged may have taken place on the UN premises, whether staff was involved or not. And secondly, um, to whatever extent Desser was benefiting financially from a group that also may be involved in this indictment. Has there been any call for um, in, you know, the UN's uh, internal audit organization to, to look into that? Um, look, I, I think the fact that uh, these kinds of things may be happening, conversations may be happening on UN grounds is obviously of great uh, concern to us. We cooperate as a matter of, uh, of rule with, uh, the home, the, with our host country authorities as we would do, uh, as we would do anywhere. Um, it obviously is incumbent, I think, on the member states to look at uh, the, um, the uh, affiliation uh, and the, the status given to this, uh, to this particular, uh, to this particular uh, NGO. Uh, I, I, had, I had another qu yes, question you did. unrelated to that, and uh, that is the stalemate regarding Jim. And I, I asked this last week, but I um, wanted to see if there's anything updated, uh, whether the Secretary General is going to uh, is or will consider taking a more proactive role in making some recommendations for uh, either enhancing Jim or coming up with an alternative mechanism uh, in if, to help prevent uh, another chemical attack, possibly, with that mechanism in place that could be viewed as a well, deterrent. We, we, the, this is why we thought the work of the gym was so important, as a matter of accountability and also as a signal to those who may thinking of, of launching uh, these, heinous, uh, these heinous attacks. Discussions are being had uh, with, with with member states. We would like to see uh, we would like to see a mechanism uh, be resuscitated to ensure accountability for these crimes. Yes, sir. Yeah, going back to Yemen, you you sp spoke about that you welcome the opening of Hodeida and. Salif. I don't think I used that word. But I mean, not you, not the entire. But you said uh, still we need <coughs> unimpeded access. Does yeah. it mean there are obstacles still present there and you are not free because what the requirements in Yemen is huge and one ship, one drop does not make a I rain. think that's exactly what I said. So, so who, so who is really doing, putting the obstacles? What kind of restrictions are they putting so that ships cannot go well, into the, 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 the main obstacle is the continued fighting. That's the main obstacle. So we need to see a stop uh, to the fighting, and we need to make sure that all the parties uh, have the best uh, have have in place the most streamlined procedures for us to be able uh, to bring humanitarian aid uh, into Yemen to help the millions of Yemenis who desperately need it. Are there, is there any fighting in Hodeida itself in the seaport? Uh, Sorry, I'm, I'm not aware of any fighting directly in, in the seaport, but I'm aware of fighting in different parts of Yemen. Uh, yes, sir. Another question on, on Saudi Arabia. There were, of course, we have seen these reports that some of those who are detained, like Prince Walid bin Talal, has, are being tortured, hung by their feet from the ceiling, what has been published in some of UK newspapers. How does the United Nations view such uh, practices. Um, we have no way of confirming those uh, reports one way or another. As a matter of principle, we think that anyone who is detained needs to be detained through due process and their rights be respected. But yes, sir. I'll, I'll come, you, I'll sir. come I will come, I will come, I will come back to you. These are, I always come back to you. I've never failed to come back to you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Steph. Uh, back to Syria. Um, what, will, what would be the next step if the uh, Syrian regime? Uh, stick to its position of not taking part in the Geneva talks to take place uh, tomorrow. I, I'm not going to speculate on, on what ifs. Matthew sure. and then uh, Abdul Hamid. I have a follow up on that and then an, another related question. <coughs> the follow up is just you seem to Evelyn, be. Evelyn, Evelyn, please. You seem to be saying in this case that, that China Energy Fund Committee has so little relationship to the UN, it's only member states, that no audit is needed. But in fact, Sun Kyan Ip had far fewer 
uh, connections to the UN. I guess I wanted you, can you articulate, is there a new standard being applied by the Guterres administration to the UN's need to investigate itself when a major indictment comes down? Because there's photographs of Mr. Patrick Ho, now in jail, with Ban Ki-moon, Wu Yu, Hong Bo, with, with DESA, a secretary and agency, in a much more extensive clear, fashion there is no than, there is no watering down of, of standards all all issues of corruption it directly involving the UN need to be uh, need to be investigated right. and that is that but is so clear. Patrick Ho giving money okay. to DESA is, doesn't that, trigger I think I've just answered okay my, the I've other question has to do with the CITES meeting that's begun mm -hmm. today in Geneva the the con convention mm -hmm. on the international traffic mm -hmm. in endangered species. Um, you've been you've said for about two weeks now that the deputy secretary general's signatures on the Rosewood should should be answered by Nigeria. And I want to the, the the compliance report prepared by CITES itself said says in paragraphs 21 and 22 that they believe that these were fi filed retrospective permits after the wood was already in China and that they've asked questions to the Nigerian authority, none of which have been answered. So if they're not answering CITES, I'm pretty sure they're not going to answer inner city press. So I want to ask you, now that it's been more than two weeks, and I know that this, the Deputy Secretary General is in town, it's, it, if the Nigerian authorities are not answering, is it her position, just yes or no, that when she signed the certificates, 4,000 certificates, this wood was already in China, given that that would be illegal under CITES? Her, her position is that uh, everything she did uh, was within uh, the bounds of the law, and next time she has a press appearance, I know she'll be delighted when to answer, be? answer those questions, whenever there is. Majid, yeah. Stefano, in Iraq again, there's a uh, legislation in, pol uh, in Iraqi parliament, it's a draft, but it uh, has a good uh, chance to be passed that allows the marriage of nine-year-old girls, uh, which is a major concern for the NGOs. Do you have any comments about that? Look, uh, as, as a rule, we're not going to comment on, on draft legislation. Uh, what is clear is that the Secretary General in the UN system stands clearly and firmly against child marriage, um, against girls being married before they reach uh, adulthood. And that's a clear. Uh, a clear point. Thank yes, you. sir. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, does the Secretary General have any comments on the launching of Islamic counterterrorism force in Saudi Arabia? Uh, com com uh, I, we, we, I've seen the press members. reports. I haven't. Uh, we have. I, I don't think we've seen the details of what was agreed. Uh, we obviously. Uh, the, the, the fight against terrorism is an important one, and sec uh, security, uh, the security aspect of it is an important one, but it's not the only one. I think the Secretary General was very clear in his speech in London about the need to respect human rights uh, and the need to look at the root causes of terrorism as well. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah could you be more specific about the uh, blockade uh, in Hodeida? and the airport in Sana'a because, uh, you know, you say it's related to fighting, but are the Saudis or the coalition, are they actually blocking these entry ports and airport? I mean, because... Well, what, I, what I said uh, pretty clearly uh, at the start of the briefing is that we had three flights that took, uh, that landed and took off from Sana'a on Saturday. We had a ship that was uh, that docked a commercial ship that docked uh, yesterday at Hodeida, and a UN chartered, I think a WFP chartered vessel uh, landed uh, was docked at um, at Salif uh, port uh, today. Uh, what's important for us is that there be unimpeded access for both humanitarian and commercial cargo to enter Hodeida and Salif ports, including those carrying fuel, and that's not the case uh, currently. Who's blocking these well, I, entries? There, the, I think there, there are challenges uh, pegged to the Saudi-led coalition. Yes, Abdul Hamid. Thank you. I have a question, but I just want to say that not covering a press conference of 34 minutes with audio and visual does not cannot be justified by covering a press release a week earlier. Thank you. My question is that the PA, Palestinian authorities, conducting census in the occupied Palestinian territories. The staff of the PA in East Jerusalem were, were arrested by Israel for, conducted, for conducting this census. Do you, are you aware of that, and do you have any I, I don't have anything with me on, on that. Uh, Matthew. Sure. I want to, uh, human rights and freedom of the press. In, in Uganda, um, which is obviously 
as um, figures prominently in the indictment you've been being asked about. Seven editors have been arrested in the past week and I wanted to, for defaming President Museveni, and I wanted to know whether the UN system is aware of that, what their comment on that is. Uh, we stand for freedom of the press and, and freedom of expression. And also in, in camp, you may have something maybe more direct on this. On Cambodia, I know that you had a statement against the, uh, the, the disbanding of the CNPR opposition party. And now the Hun Sen government has moved to dis, uh, dissolve the center, Cambodian Center for Human Rights, saying that it's connected to that party, it was, has a co-founder with it. Do you, does, what's the, I know that the UN has had this role in Cambodia. What, what does it think of this trend, and what does it intend well, I think, to? I think we've, we've said it, and we'll say it again, that I think this, this is a trend that raises a lot of concern. Uh, it's important that in the, the run-up and during the elections next year that there is a democratic space and that there is space uh, that is free of fear and free of intimidation to allow all Cambodians uh, to express themselves. Feti. <coughs> Okay. Uh, with regard to the UN reform that uh, came with the new Secretary General, is there any uh, assessment of what's been achieved since he took office in January 1st uh, this year? We are almost a year into his uh, tenure. And uh, what, what have been uh, accomplished and if we can quantify it in terms of uh, either savings or adding resources to the organization, uh, any? Well, you know, as you know, the bulk of, of the reform proposals the Secretary General made is one that member states have to act on. He has been spending quite a lot of time briefing ambassadors, different regional groups on the management reform, on the peace and security reform, on the reform of the development uh, system. And we very much hope uh, that the member states of the General Assembly will act positively uh, on, those, uh, on those reforms. Can we put a dollar uh, amount to what have been achieved so far? No, I'm not able to put a dollar amount. I'm uh, coming back going, to you. Going back to the, the story of uh, arrested hundreds of people arrested in Saudi Arabia, it seems according to press reports that deals are being done uh, fleecing the emirs from tens of billions of dollars. Uh, how does the United Nations view such practices? I mean, arresting people, putting them under arrest until they cough up their wealth and then they can be released. No due process whatsoever. Why the uh, human Rights Council is silent about that. Well, that that's a question for the Human Rights uh, Council. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, as a matter of principle, we believe that all those uh, accused of any crime, including corruption, uh, need to have their due process rights uh, respected, and that's that's a principled and a that's a principled position. The the wanton arrest of of uh, emirs and uh, or dignitaries or even financiers is uh, prevailing in, in the area. For example, Sheikh Khalifa of the United Arab Emirates has been uh, in, any, in unknown places for over a year now, or over two years. Nobody knows. Last time... Nizar, what is... Uh, I, I, the question I, I, is that, I, I'm, I mean, I'm always I mean, entertained by the observations, emir, but I'd like or, to the or question. rulers disappear, and the United Nations doesn't even ask about them. Sheikh Khalifa has been... And con and con for, for, for I, over I, would, I would refer you to my last uh, answer. I will now leave you with...